Welcome to the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Carrie. And this podcast is dedicated to making things simple and easy for you in the kitchen. Carrie Brown is a classically trained, world-class chef who has a passion for creating ketogenic recipes that taste better than anything you've ever experienced. But more than that, she loves teaching people how to cook the right way. And each week on this podcast, Brian and I discuss all the ways you can create awesome keto food that is guaranteed to make you a rock star in the kitchen. If you'd like to learn more about Keto Evangelist Kitchen, you can go to KetoEvangelistKitchen.com and sign up for the newsletter. In exchange for your email address, you'll get brand new recipes delivered to your inbox, ready for you to whip up in the kitchen and enjoy with your friends and family. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. You're about to enter the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Hello, every peoples. This is Brian, and she's Carrie. Hello. And we are in the Keto Evangelist Kitchen for our weekly podcast. Woohoo! Casting of the pod. So, um, here's the thing: we um, we have been in the habit, Carrie and I, of, of reading some reviews that we've been. A, a, acquiring or collecting on the iTunes uh, board or the iTunes um, app, whatever you want to call it. And guess what? We ran out because there's only like a few. And so what we need, if you're listening, if you can hear my voice right now, do us a favor and go to iTunes and leave a rating and review so that we can read it because otherwise we're just reading the same ones over and over again. And while that's fun for me, Carrie does not enjoy that. So if you want to continue to tell the world just how awesome Carrie is, you should go do that by leaving a review and giving us a nice rating in in the iTunes. So gotta log into iTunes, gotta make sure you got an account and you're you're logged in and on your computer and stuff, and then leave a review and a rating. Also I feel like I'm. An, I feel like I'm an AM radio. Now Carrie hasn't said anything yet. So so, but I feel like I'm an AM radio, like the stereotypical like, um, like, like early morning talk show radio. So if you'd like to go and uh, give us a nice rating and review, that'd be fantastic. Also coming up at the top of the hour, we've got weather and traffic. But I'm not. See, I'm actually doing a podcast. So uh, leave us a review and a rating because we need it. And we want to know, we need the world to know how awesome Carrie is. And every time I say that, she rolls her eyes um, because um, she's exercising her eyes, really, is, is the point. Um, also, if you want to connect with us on social media, um, Carrie and I are in Keto Evangelist Kitchen Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Twitter is Keto Van Kitchen. Instagram is Keto Evangelist Kitchen. So... Holla in one of those places and you know we might be able to talk back to you and i don't mean talk back in the sense of um you know like talk back like what's the i mean like have a conversation and stuff so carrie should say something now you didn't mean the kind of sassy kind of talking back. You sassy meant- that's the word i was looking yeah, for you, you didn't mean that did you i did not i did not um, so yeah, that's what I was going for. See, this is why, this is why I need Carrie on the show because did, otherwise. Did you know we don't use that word in England? I didn't know what sassy was till I came here. Do you use something in its place? Like, is there an equivalent? We, we do, but now you've asked me, I can't think oh, what it would be. Wait, there's a, there's a, I, um, oh, I know there's a word that I hear used from, from, you know, on, on, on British shows and I've heard of the. And I and it's it's totally escaping me uh, right now. I know there's an equivalent. I just can't remember what it is. Um, someone will have to let us know. Like, what's the what's the British equivalent of sassy? Um, anyway, so my point of all of that is we don't have a rating and review to read because you guys need to give us some. So give us some ratings and reviews so that we can read them on the air, please. And thank you. Okay, then moving on, moving on. So that, you know what that means if we're moving on. (laughs) 
That means that we are moving on to Motivation Monday. So, Motivation Monday. What are we talking about today for motivation? Really simple. Here's the Motivation Monday theme for today. Surround yourself with people who are on the same mission as you. So surround yourself with people who are on the same mission as you. Now, there's a guy a long time ago, his name was John Dunn, and his, his name is pronounced or is spelled D-O-N-N-E, and uh, he made a statement um, a while, like um, a very famous quote that was, no man is an island. And that's often quoted to, to basically mean that you know, you can't get through this life by yourself. And there's, there's some truth to that. So you kind of have to deal with people. So you might as well deal with people who are going to be on the same road as you and who are working on the same stuff that you're working on, who can help you get there. So you're going to build a team. So why not build the team that's going to help you go there, get to where you need to go. And I'm saying this from a, from a, a place of um, personal experience, because doing what what I am doing and, and Carrie, uh, doing what she is doing. We both understand the value of having a good solid team. So when you build the team, you want to make sure you're putting your, you're putting your team together with people who are going to complement your, your strengths and your talents and are also working toward the same thing as you are. So that is what I have to say for that. So Carrie, do you want to chime in on that? So from a keto perspective, I think it can also make it a lot easier if you've got people around you who are supportive of your lifestyle change, even if they don't understand it and even if they don't want to do it as well. It's it can make it a lot more difficult if you've got if you're surrounded by people who are scared of change or aren't supportive or and are kind of giving you oh you know, that, that, uh, eating that way is dangerous or, you know, whatever you have to eat carbs or so on and so forth. So in specifically related to moving to a ketogenic lifestyle, surround yourself with, with positive people who are going to support you, even though they may not understand what you're doing. Even if they don't understand or, or necessarily agree because of it. Right. And that's, I think that's a really crucial point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, cause you can still be supported by people. They don't have to be this, you know, they don't, they don't have to live your lifestyle, but they can still support you. And it's best if you surround yourself with those kinds of people, um, the ones close to you and the ones not as close to you, but the building that community is really, really important. So surround yourself. And, and, and we can help with that. And, uh, you know, and I think there are, I don't know how many, but I would imagine there's quite a few people who, who, you know, you can't always get rid of I don't mean that in a bad way but you you can't always there are some people in your life who you can't disconnect from right and so if you if you do have to deal with negative people even though you surround yourself with as many of the positive supportive people as you can you may still be left with some negative nellies and that's another great reason why our Facebook group can really help you because it's full of people who are essentially on the same mission understand what you're going through, can help you through it, can cheer along from the sidelines. And even though they're strangers, that can be really, really uplifting. You know, we see on the on the ketogenic success book where, you know, you post Im images, you know, before and after pictures or progress pictures. And even though it's one and a half thousand strangers, having one and a half strangers, one and a half thousand strangers going, yeah, you gay, you look great. That can be in incredibly helpful. And so that's part of your strategy of surrounding yourself with like-minded supporting people is the Facebook groups are really good for that. That is a good point, right? And we work really hard to make sure that it, that it stays positive. Now, the thing about it is the admin team that we've got there, there's only a limited number of us and the groups grow really fast. So we do everything we can, but we try to make sure their focus is on keeping it positive and staying, um, staying, uh, with that attitude of supportiveness. So if you're not, if you're not in any of the groups, the, the Keto Evangelist Kitchen, the Ketogenic Success, the Ketogenic Athlete, if you're not in any of those groups, 
join, take a look around, you know, see that we're, we're working really hard to make sure that you, there's a community available that isn't just full of people wanting to argue and fight and bicker. It's about learning and, and getting to know, you know, getting to know people, getting to learn about the lifestyle and getting to, um, be successful. So that's, that's what we're doing. So that's a good segue for that. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Carrie Brown. I'm here to serve. Yes, yes, you are. All right, so that's our Motivation Monday. Surround yourself with people on the same mission that you are. And the corollary for that is if you're surrounding yourself with people who aren't on that same mission, get rid of them. <laughs> and I don't necessarily mean with a, you know, needing a shovel. I'm not saying that's not the case. I'm not advocating that. The attorneys are telling me I can't tell you that. But I'm just saying it's an option. Carrie knows more about that. But anyway, all right. So there we go. That's our Motivation Monday. So there you go. Okay. So, um, hey, Carrie Brown. Yes. What What are we going to be talking about today in the actual meat of the episode? We are celebrating our fearless leader. I don't know what we that means. <laughs> We're going to talk about salami. We are talking about salami. Um, well, that's, because uh -huh. a couple of episodes ago, I made you talk about lettuce for an hour. Mm, yeah, that's true. I remember that. And so this is this is your reward for talking about lettuce for an hour is that you now get to talk about your favorite topic on earth, which is salami i i'm not sure it's my favorite topic on earth but it is one of my favorite foods for sure uh okay so we're going to be talking about salami uh but before we get to salami we have to talk about something else and that's that's the uh uh it's called the the word is uh charcuterie uh so if i can i can frenchify that charcuterie and basically that was very good. Thank you very much. I am French. You'll be cycling around with a beret and a string of onions next. I believe it's called a beret, not a beret. <laughs> beret. <laughs> it's a beret. Um, I'll bring you a beret when I come to Austin. Uh, so charcuterie is uh, it's a French word that means essentially uh, cooked meat. Uh, it is from chow, which means meat, and cut, which is cooking. So it's a way to cook particular kinds of meat. Particular bacon, ham, sausage, and such as that. Guess what? One of those kinds of meats is salami. So, so salami is a... Uh, it's a particular kind of, um, so it's, it's a fermented and it's, it's a dried meat that's in a sausage format that is usually typically sliced into smaller, um, into slices of different, um, different, uh, what's the gauges, different length or, or widths. That's the word I'm looking for. Thicknesses. Thicknesses. That's the word. That's the word. Um, anyway, so. Now, everyone's like, um, duh, I know what salami is. Well, so see, here's the thing. Mm, you probably don't because the word salami that we use in Merca is, is not exactly correct. It, uh, it is a, so salami is a kind of sausage that is sort of in the salumi group. And so when someone says salami, if you were to go to Italy, for example, and ask for salami, they'd say, what kind of salami do you want? There's no like a single kind. There's different varieties of it. So you'd have to, um, you'd have to clarify what you're talking about. So, so what we're going to talk about today is the different kind of the different kinds of, uh, salami, um, and how that plays out. So, uh, so salami is a kind of salumi which is a product of charcuterie. So we all clear on that now. Salami does have some common ground. There, there's some common characteristics amongst salami varieties. And that is they've all got um, certain ingredients in them and they've all got, um, they're ma basically made from the same kinds of meat. So typically they're meat, they're beef and pork. 
Although there are different kinds of other stuff um, you can get. I don't know why you would want to do this, but you can, in fact, get turkey salami. I, again, I don't know why you would do that, but you can. You can actually get chicken salami as well. I, again, I am not in any way advocating for that particular kind of lifestyle. I mean, you're a grown up, do what you want, but I have to, I have to call into question some life choices if you're buying turkey salami. Just, I'm just, I'm putting that out there. Also, goose salami, really. Now, um, for the most part, it's beef and pork is what you're going to find, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Salami's got um, the best kind of salami that I'm going to suggest. You should see chunks of fat in there. The, you should see chunks of white in the slices. That means there's minced fat. Um, sometimes it's minced garlic or it's garlic that's in there as well. That's part of the chunks or the the the, the white things that you'll see um, in the actual sliced uh, pieces themselves. It's going to have salt. It's going to have different kinds of spices, peppers, various herbs. Sometimes they add vinegar. Sometimes they add wine. Sometimes both. Um, and then they ferment the, the, the meat and then they, um, they put it in a cellulose casing and they let it dry out, basically. So it's, it's, it goes through that kind of process uh, in order to be um, turned into its ingredients into salami. Um, now, the problem uh, with, with a lot of salami is they, they, you'll look at the ingredients and you'll see things like sugar. Or you'll see things like, uh, or people complain because they have nitrates in them. So what is the deal with that? Well, sugar is part of the, um, the curing process. And typically, while sugar is never a, a good addition to a keto diet, when, when sugar is added to something like bacon or something like salami or cured meats of some kind, the fermentation process and the curing process that goes into it really does remove a lot of it. Not only that, but it, um, um, in the case of bacon, when you cook it, it also burns it off as well. So I wouldn't worry too much about the... So, so the sugar that is on the label, like with yogurt, the sugar that's on the label is the amount they put in at the start. Correct. Not the amount that is still in it at the end of the fermentation process. That is correct. It's, it's, you, you don't really know what is in afterwards, but they have to put something on there. So they do. So if you see the ingredients, now I would tell you this, if you see an, if you see a list of ingredients on a particular salami and it says high fructose corn syrup, I would not buy it. Now I would not buy it just because that's just a cheap product. And you know, I personally would not buy that. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't. You do what you got to do. I mean, you've got everyone's got their own budgetary constraints, whatever. So, um, so do the best you can with what you have. Exactly right. So, uh, if if you have an alternative, I would not buy the the salami that has high fructose corn syrup in it. Um, so, um, now the other the other I, the other thing that gets talked about a lot is when you're talking about cured meats and in particularly salami and those kinds of things, nitrates. Um, I don't understand the, the problem with nitrates and let me explain why. Here's a list of vegetables that are considered high in nitrates. And by high, I mean, they, they have essentially the same amount of nitrates as a few slices of salami, celery, watercress, chervil, lettuce of different kinds, um, beetroot, spinach, and rocket. What's the American word for rocket? Carrie? Um, oh, you fail! Um, you, um, um, <laughs> you fail being British. It is arugula. I just at being British, arugula. <laughs> um, Sorry, it, England. <laughs> Union Jack is coming down. That is just that. That is just it. Um, Incidentally, since Brian has actually stopped speaking for a moment. Oh my goodness. Um, the, the reason that Brian is doing all the talking and I'm just sitting here is because I know pretty much nothing about know nothing about salami except how to eat it. So this this is Brian's episode uh, where Brian gets to shine. Right. Yes. That's and, and 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 persuade you that he does actually know something about food. Oh yeah, I, that was not part of the deal. Um, I think that's expressly in my contract that I ha I. I'm not allowed to show any knowledge of food whatsoever. Um, I think I had that written in. I'm pretty sure. Um, all right. So, so 
okay, so this is why I'm doing all the talking. Um, yes. So I apologize. Because I'd never eaten salami <laughs> You've until never... last August. Oh, okay. So when, I you... okay. When, when Brian said, all I eat is salami, I'm like, huh, maybe I'd better eat some salami so I have any idea what he's did talking you, about. Did you, did you, did you enjoy it? Was it good? It, it, uh, initially I was like, really? But now I'm like, <laughs> okay, you ooh, did, salami. You I'm going to buy salami. Okay, you did not have the best kind of salami then. Because normally if it's good salami, you'd be like, oh, this is pretty good. And then on my last big road trip, which was over the over the Christmas break, um, I found myself in Burley, Idaho. Um, Does that look numbers. exactly the way it sounds? Does that, I mean, I, I when you say Burley, Idaho, I picture a particular kind of environment. Does it look exactly the way it sounds? Yes. I figured as much. So it's in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. and in the bottom, bottom along the, that road that goes along the bottom of Idaho. And so I had to overnight somewhere. So I overnighted in Burley, Idaho and, and I found myself in the Walmart. So actually it's not that small cause it's got a Walmart. I found myself in the Walmart purchasing an enormous tray of mozzarella or cheese and 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 salami yes. selection yes. and that was my dinner and i was like who have i become <laughs> what has brian williamson done to me uh, so yeah i in august i was like really salami and now i'm like yay salami so i just like to point out that like when I first told her like my my limited menu, she looked at me as if I were one of the downstairs people in Downton Abbey. She that's that's exactly the the attitude. Oh, you're one of those, are you? Oh well. I suspect that it it doesn't surprise me at all that you don't eat so very much you don't, you don't have a discerning palate here. No, no, not at all. So um, sometimes I wonder if you have a palate period, <laughs> discerning or otherwise. It's true. It's very true. Um, I recently, uh, yeah, I don't. I, yeah, flavor doesn't bother me. I'm like, is this keto? Yes, good. I don't care what it tastes like. Um, although I will say this. Here's the thing. I will say this. Coffee is a is a deal breaker for me. I cannot stand coffee. It has to have something in it because. I just, it just tastes like liquid dirt. It just it just tastes <laughs> bad. I don't know. It's just it's bad. So, um, so coffee. I had a cup of liquid dirt this morning. I am. Um, do you drink your? You don't drink black coffee, right? You drink, you put stuff in it. I, I do, but this morning I had breakfast with a, a friend of mine who who is very clever and he knows all about Macs. And I just bought my first Mac, and I'm just like. I don't even know how to turn it on. So um, he said, meet me for breakfast. And I did. And, and one of his private, and it's a, it's a dive. I mean, it's a, like a, it's a diner. It, it's a divey diner. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and it's called Chase's pancake house or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, and, but I knew before I even rolled up that it was going to be that little kind of brown, porcelain mm -hmm. mug thing yes this yes and it was going to be filled with liquid dirt and, and i was not disappointed uh, the, yes i know and it's um it's curved on the it's like it, mm -hmm. it sinks in the middle and both like the mm -hmm. top and the bottom of the cup itself ha are mm -hmm. like flared out it was like the ubiquitous yes. diner yes. mug and i'm like they're gonna fill it with liquid dirt and today's an interesting day, so I'm going to drink it, and it's going to be all good. Did you add anything to it, though? I, I I carry a bag of erythritol around with me, which, of course, looks like crack, so that gets some attention. But, Even better. You know, I don't care because I, I don't care what right. people think of me. So I pulled out my little bag of erythritol and threw that in, and, and it tasted like sweet liquid dirt. <laughs> See, but okay. as I say, today's an interesting day. So I could have kind of really eaten anything and it, I, I, I didn't care about. I wasn't into taste this morning. That's how I am every day. And that's that's what I'm saying. That <laughs> like every like that's exactly it. Like as long as it's not if if I drink coffee that's got some erythritol in it, I'm good. Like I don't need anything else. I will add other stuff, but I don't need anything else because like that, that, that compensates for the dirtness of it. Uh, we need to do a coffee episode. Yes, we do. Let's right. do that. All right. Not this so one, anyway, Not this one, um, I had liquid dirt this morning, sweet liquid dirt, and that was fine. Um, but 
Salami, on the other hand, I mean, last August, I was like, eh, salami. And now I'm like, yay, salami. And I will actually go seek out salami. And now I've just started branching out. Into... I've, I've started looking for exciting salami. Oh, see, I like, now... Rather like exciting lettuces, right? Don't just have the, you know, don't just have the the romaine of the salami world. <laughs> That's right. Have the rocket... Right. And the and the chicory and the the butter cardamom lettuce yes. of the uh, salami world. So now I've started going and looking at all these different cured meats and kind of standing in the deli meat section for ages, reading labels and and just oh, I wonder what this tastes like and oh, I wonder what that tastes like. So I mean, by August I'm going to be a salami expert, but right now nothing. No? I got nothing. Well, okay, so. I am just maybe a couple of steps ahead of you because um, I I like trying different varieties of salami, um, different kinds of cured meats all, all in general, just because one, they're not vegetables, and two, you get all kinds of stuff that taste interesting. Like You don't like them all. I don't like them all, but I, I think they're all interesting. Um, so... <clears throat> So the, the basic characteristics of salami is it's going to have ground up fat in it. It's going to have garlic in it, salt. It's going to have some other things to cure it. They they let the stuff ferment and then they dry it out. And that's and some of them are round, some of them are square, some of them are star shaped. It all depends on the um, the way that they're prepared. So <clears throat> so some of the different kinds of salami uh, that you may have heard. Now I'm not I, I'm not fluent in Italian, so some of these may be. Um, uh, poorly pronunciated by me, so I'm just saying that now. Uh, but I do know pepperoni. Pepperoni is a kind of salami. Um, I have huge problems with pepperoni, though, especially um, when people talk about them on pizza. I think pepperoni is the worst pizza topping ever in the history of pizza. That's another discussion. But I just had to get. And there. I, I simply do not understand pepperoni on a pizza. I, 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 I come from a country where we put duck and pineapple and tuna and all sorts of things on a pizza. And I simply don't understand a plain pepperoni pizza. I'm sorry, America. I cast me out. If you will. I yeah. I, that's that's me and pepperoni pizza. I come from the country that does put pepperoni on the pizza and I don't understand pepperoni pizza. Uh, I would prefer cheese pizza before I, what I, what I'd like pepperoni pizza. But having said that, you give me some pepperoni and some guacamole and I'm happy. Like I, I'll go to town on that. Like I, that's fine with me. Um, the difference is that there's um, it, okay. So pepperoni is a kind of salami, but it's got a very distinct flavor to it. It's got a very distinct kind of flavor profile because of the uh, because of the preparation that goes into it, and because of the ingredients that go into it. <clears throat> so uh, so if you think about it, like when you go to the deli and you're like, okay, I want salami, and then I want pepperoni. You you it's they're both basically salami. But the flavor profile is really what I want you to think about. They're like all the different kinds of salami, they have those variety that that variety of of, la- of flavor profile. So it's possible that you don't like one kind, but you will really like another. Um, another- so yeah, so that I mean that's a great point, right? Don't if you kind of grew up on pepperoni, don't think they all taste like pepperoni. Or if you like, if you've tried one, you know, general average salami don't think that they all taste the same you can try different ones and find ones that maybe you like more than others because they they don't taste all the same at all they don't even have all the same textures or so it's actually quite an exciting world right don't 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 limit yourself to oh i don't like pepperoni so i therefore don't like salami right yeah or or even you know i so when you in America, if you go into a deli and you say I want some salami, generally speaking, that's a that's a thing. Like there's a standard, like generic kind of salami. So if you, even if you don't like that, you still might like some of the more um, uh, artisanal or or specific kinds or or specially prepared kinds of of salami. Um, for example, another kind uh, that is uh, yes. not typically not considered. Um, Salami, not not known as salami, but chorizo. So chorizo is a kind of salami. Although typically, when chorizo is eaten, it's eaten in a crumbled variety. Um, so for folks who don't know, if you've never heard of chorizo before, it is a Spanish um, or Portuguese. It's it's basically on that and that same like little 
area of Europe. Um, and it is uh, same th- same kind of thing. It's it's meat. It's been cured. It's been dried, um, but it's got a very very distinct flavor profile that is um, it is pap- paprika uh, is the primary like it, it's very red because of the paprika and the paprika is a very big deal in terms of the fa- flavor profile. Now, if you're going paprika, it's pronounced paprika. Okay, fine. It's the same word. Um, different people pronounce it different ways, um, but it's paprika, right? Just and, stop it. Yeah, it's it's paprika or <laughs> paprika, whatever. Um, so anyway, but the point is that that is uh, the main ingredient. Now, folks who live in my area, uh, down in in Texas, um, you we know chorizo as a as a Mexican. Uh, meal dish item not as a spanish one because there's a the the, there's a a mexican variety of the same kind of thing but it's still essentially the same kind of same kind of thing it's it's a salami but again it's not eaten in the same way salami is it's actually in the crumbled variety so uh again that's that's a kind of salami so if you don't like pepperoni if you really don't like um uh, so the generic kind of salami try, you know, give chorizo a shot. I'm not a fan of chorizo. I don't really like it very much. Um, I'll eat it because it's not a vegetable, but I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily choose it if given other options. Have you ever had chorizo? No, because it's hot. The, it is. It does have a bit of a spice to it. And, and you, my, my spice tolerance is minus one. <laughs> So no jalapenos for you? No. Okay. Is that a British thing or is that a Carrie Brown thing? I think it's a Carrie Brown thing, but I also think that in England, spice is not like a huge thing like it is here. I've noticed that in in America, spice is like everybody loves spicy. And it, it, I've met a lot of people who think that if it's not spicy hot, then it's bland which I kind of don't understand. So I think Americans grow up with spicy, whereas British people, we typically don't. That doesn't mean that no English people like spicy food. Right. Some English people right. love spicy food. But I think as a as a nation, we're down the cool end, not the hot end. Right. Well, uh, that's when I think of England, I think of cool. That's just... <laughs> Having said that, the num- now the number one national food or dish in in England is curry. I can but that's that. happened like recently. It used yeah. to be like roast beef and Yorkshire pudding, but now it's curry. So that we're definitely kind of moving up the scale. We're right. definitely getting warmer. <laughs> right. Getting warmer. Um, now But we- I literally I find even so last night, for example, uh, a girlfriend took me out to dinner and I had elk because I don't think I'd ever had elk before and I'm, I'm all about trying things I've never had. And it was elk wrapped in bacon. How could that possibly be bad? Right. And in a mushroom peppercorn sauce and the, the sauce was too hot for me. Because of the peppercorns? Because of the peppercorns. Wowzers. So I, and I actually – I. You know, it, it. I actually didn't enjoy it. I mean, I kind of picked out all the peppercorns because I didn't want to accidentally yeah, but it's bite still there. one. It's still there, though. But, you know, and I kind of like, I, I ate all the elk and the bacon, obviously, and kind of steered around the peppercorns and ate the mushrooms. But even then, it was, it, it, it spoiled my enjoyment because there was just too much heat in my mouth, just too much spicy. <laughs> that is a very sensitive palate, let me just say. That's, that's, yeah. that's a very sensitive palate. Okay. Um, and that, that's, so chori- chorizo and me will not probably so much, never get on. Never, never the twain shall meet. No. Um, so yeah, the, you can get, and that's another cool thing for me cause I like spicy foods. So you can get, you can find different, different spice varieties of salamis, um, of different kinds of cured meats too, because really, <clears throat> and, and Carrie and I have talked about this too in different conversations. Uh, like she and I are kind of in the same, uh, of the same mindset, like what is considered traditional flavor profile for f- flavor profiles for things. She and I are both like, why, like, why couldn't we make it different? Like what is stopping us from, you know, changing things up a little bit. 
and making these flavors out. So, you know, when you get traditional people who are like, nope, this is the way salami is made because this is the way it's always been done. That is less appealing to me. I mean, it's good, but if you can, you know, mess around with it and make some adjustments and make it even, uh, you know, better for you or different in some way, I, I like that. So there's artisanal and, and like um, boutique kinds of stuff too. Um, all right. So other kinds of salami that you can, you can check into uh, there. One is called winter salami or Hungarian salami. And it is also made from pork. Um, lots of spices. It has a very distinct taste to it. Um, it's, uh, it's cured in cold air. Whereas a lot of the other salamis are cold are cured in like a smokehouse or in a warm area. So it, that's why it's called a winter salami. It's very different. Um, it's really good though. Uh, and you, they usually make it with lots and lots of fat. You can see the marbling all throughout. Super delish. So winter salami or Hungarian salami, give that a shot. Other kind um, is um, uh, finocchiona, which uh, is, it sounds like a really um, fancy word, but if you like fennel, and there are some people who really dig fennel, um, this, that particular, uh, finocchiona has a lot of fennel in it. Ooh, I dig fennel. <laughs> I love fennel. Do what was that called again? Finocchiona. It's uh, F-I-N-O-C-C-H-I-O-N-A. And it is, if you, if you like fennel, if you dig fennel, I mean, in fact, uh, finocchio is the Italian word for fennel. So that's one of the, the one of the biggest profiles, or flavor profiles in that sort of thing. Um so um it's also made with red wine so it's and you and i have talked about this before we're talking about cooking with alcohol when you when you get a complex kind of alcohol ingredient it really does a lot for the flavor profile so you get some really neat kind of especially old world kinds of like fiorentino stuff stuff it tastes really super good so um what about pancetta Okay, I was going to get to that. So um, pancetta is um, – the way that pancetta is made, it is um, technically not in the salami variety only because it's not de- – you're not dealing with the same kinds of um, – of, um, um, I, I don't want – this is going to sound weird, but meat construction. It's more of a bacon type thing than it is a salami type thing. So, um, whereas bacon is a cured meat and bacon and pancetta would fall under that, <clears throat> that, um, uh, charcuterie kind of umbrella salami itself is more of a minced or diced kind of meat inside the casing. Whereas pancetta is a solid piece that is, um, like rolled up and sliced, you know what I'm saying? But it's, I normally, when I've, um, I, I've heard about pancetta a lot, but I typically, I, I'm very when I'm developing recipes, I'm very budget conscious. So I tend to stick to bacon rather than pancetta Uh just because of the cost factor. But I, I, you know, it, I did get some and it does taste different. And if you have the budget, Hey, but the, when I see in the store, it's normally in tiny little cubes. So it's not, sliced like oh really you see you, salami. you find yours in cubes i've never actually seen that i've always little, seen it yeah in little cubes i think that's the only way huh. that i've ever seen pancetta maybe that's a seattle thing i don't know but it comes in little cubes so it, it is like chunky pieces rather huh. than interesting thin, fine slices well i used to make a um back before back before i was keto i used to make a particular kind of meal and it required it was a it was a kind of um baked pasta and it started with some pancetta being rendered down in the pan and it it got me hooked on pancetta and i really really like pancetta um especially if you get it really thinly sliced which is typically how it's made um super good super good really delicate really really good um so i'm a big fan of it um, but that's not in the scope of this because we're talking about salami. So, um, uh oh, oh, that's prosciutto. Oh, so she, she, Carrie is showing me a a um, a, a container of prosciutto, which is another kind of. Um, it's a very thinly sliced ham, prosciutto, um, which is again not a salami, but it's still really super good. And and prosciutto is basically they take. They take an entire like um, 
quarter of the of the of the the pig and they dry and cure that out and then they thinly slice the um the um the the, the meat off of it it is good if you've never had prosciutto before dude it's good check it out it's good for you um so yeah so so pancetta and prosciutto are like cousins to the salami stuff and i totally recommend them they are pricey uh, but they're really super good so uh so okay let's get back to the salami thing um so i've got two more that i want to talk about that you're typically going to find Next one, is, the the next one I want to talk about is is uh, Genoa or Genoa, depending on who you're talking to or how you're saying it. And typically, Genoa salami is um, a larger variety. They come, it make they 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 roll them in bigger sizes as opposed to smaller. Like like think of pepperoni, really really small diameter, and Genoa salami is really larger diameter. Sometimes they're in they're in square instead of circular. Um, but they are much more peppery. Genoa salami is. Uh, it's got it's got whole peppercorns in it. Again, it's got fennel, but not as much. Usually made with wine. Um, it, it's really really good. Um, it's 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 sort of like what you think of when you. So if you know salami, like just regular generic salami, Genoa is, or Genoa is sort of like that plus some in terms of the flavor profile. It's just it's a little bit more intense than than typical salami. Uh, and the last one that I want to talk about is my favorite, my absolute favorite. Soprasada is just good. I'm just going to say that. So it is, um, is a very different kind of salami. Um, it is uncured. Um, and so or they make a they make an uncured and they make a cured kind, um, but uh, you're not you generally won't find soprasada in like um, like a a what a a how do I I don't know like a heavily trafficked sort of grocery store unless it's got a very well stocked deli se- uh, section. So. Um, because soprasada tends to be a little bit more on the pricey end of things. So if it's a, if it's sort of a budget conscious kind of grocery store, chances are they, they probably won't have any. Um, but it's, it's in my opinion, some of the best. And especially if when you slice it nice and thin, um, it's just, it, it's, it's the, the, the flavor prof- profile is really, really good to it. Um, it's, it's not what you think of when you think of salami, they do, you know, they, they season it in different ways. They use different, and, and depending on the the, the soprasada, they use different kinds of um, seasonings. But I would really recommend that you go out and you try some. You know, so <clears throat> go out, go find yourself like a, a quarter of a pound or an eighth of a pound of it, which is going to be a few slices, and dig in, and you know, I think you'll like it. So that's my favorite is soprasada. Uh, it's my favorite kind of salami. Um, but essentially, that's that's the thing. So. If you've got a nice selection in your deli in your deli section of your grocery store, and you can ask that, and if you can't, that's the other thing. And if Carrie and I talked about this too, is if you can't talk to your butcher and you can't talk to the person behind the counter at the deli, um, you might want to find another grocery store. Like you should be able to ask them questions and have them know stuff because it is food that you're putting in your face, right? So you want to kind of know what it is that you're eating. Um, so anyway, that's that's all that I I can talk about with salami. There's all there's there's all kinds of different other stuff. You know, there's kinds that have different mustards, uh, mustard seeds built into them. Um, there's German salamis. There's uh, there's uh, Napoli salami, which is um, which is made uh, which is named after a, a particular area in the Naples area of Italy. So they have a their own like custom kind of way to do things. So anyway, my point is there's a whole bunch of variety, so you should check it out. You should find what, what you like. I just I feel like I was just rambling just then. Do you agree or disagree? No, I'm fascinated. <laughs> right. Just for those who can't see, Carrie just woke up. Like I she was like asleep and like she You're fibbing. Stop she, it, Williamson. She, fibbing. She Otherwise caught... I'm going to call you by your nickname that you hate. Uh, all right, fine. So just stop. Fine. Oh, I did forget to say this. 
one thing about salami is you don't, you should not cook it, right? Like some, some deli meats, you can throw it in the grill and you can kind of cook it up a little bit. Don't do that with salami. It just, it, it, it's not, it's not as good if you do that. It, it does, it does diminish some of the awesomeness of it, um, a bit. So just, just keep that in mind. So it, it's a cold cut for a reason. Um, Oh, you know what I forgot to talk about? I th- now that I said it all, um, capicola and mortadella. Um, those are two kinds of, um, those are in the, the, uh, the salami family ish. Uh, <clears throat> capicola is also really, really good. I'm a huge, huge fan of, of, of capicola. Um, it's not technically a salami. It's more of a just plain old cold cut, but dude, it's good. Seriously. It's super good. So, just in case people are wondering, maybe non-salami eaters are wondering why we did a whole episode on salami or cold meats or charcuterie, it's because it's awesome for keto. Right. Because, one, lots of fat. Mm Mm-hmm. Two, lots of variety. And keto does, you know, to be honest, keto does shrink the variety of foods that you used to eat. So you can add in kind of like lettuce. You can add in a lot more variety than just one thing. Right. And it's also incredibly portable. So when I really fell in love with salami was during my big road trip to Death Valley because, it, you know, wherever you are, you know, you're going to – grocery store or, or there's fast food places or wherever it just you know i can i can leave home in seattle with a, one of those big trays of salami and cheese and that's powering me all the way to salt lake which is gen- generally a one day drive for me or san francisco one day drive that's it right i'm done i don't need to stop at a um gas stations and get garbage i don't i right. mean i'm there's all my food right there i don't have to worry about it spoiling because it's not going to spoil over the 15 hours i it's easy to eat it, there's no mess i don't need a fork i don't it, it's just salami is just incredibly portable without having to worry about food poisoning <laughs> right. um right. and it's almost like you know keto Right in a in a little handful, you're just it's like perfect keto food, and incredibly transportable. And there's a ton of different varieties to keep it exciting, and it's just a really simple, easy, fast way to to keep you on track without having to think too much about you know this that you know all the other things we think about when we're thinking about choosing food. That's why salami gets its own episode because it's just it it it's easy, it's fast, it's delicious. There's lots of variety. It's the best road trip food ever. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, yeah, I I agree with everything that you just said. Um, not only that, but you don't have to be road tripping to enjoy it. You know, you can just... right. You don't, but it is. Uh, you know, for me, that was like life saving. Right. I used to be powered by jerky. <laughs> But right. then I discovered salami and, and actually, and, and there's nothing wrong with jerky. I love jerky. However, it's way, way higher, typically way, way higher in protein than fat. Whereas you get a lot more fat with salami. Um, plus if you're road tripping and you're eating a lot of jerky, you have to remember to bring floss things. You don't with salami. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you got to make sure. So don't don't road trip with jerky if you don't have floss with you. Yeah, that's the, unless you want to just be irritated for the whole trip. Like you, you want to have. <laughs> right. Yeah, because that's. <laughs> so I, I I I did. I used to be my road trips used to be powered by beef jerky and cucumber, and now they're powered by salami and cheese. Right. Um, yeah, so my son and I had recently had to take a trip. Uh, actually, it was my whole family, but my son and I were in the same vehicle. Um, had a my grandson was born, um, so my second grandchild. This one's the boy. And yay babies! Yay babies! And um, we were headed up to see my my oldest son, so we were powered by salami on the way back 
down. Oh, wait. I was supposed to say grandchildren? You're not old enough to have grandchildren. You were not supposed to say that because I am old enough to have grandchildren. <laughs> well, you don't look it. Oh, good grief. You. <laughs> <sighs> Yes, yes, Carrie Brown. Uh, sorry, Car- m- move on. Back I, to the I have forgotten what I was talking about. You were in the car driving. I am flummoxed. A, I am a flummoxed. child eating salami. Yes, I bought some salami and we ate it. The end. Flummoxed, I tell you. Um, all right. So, so the point is, as Carrie said, salami is totally keto. It's totally good, and especially if you find if you find a really good variety that's got you know visible fat chunks in it, super good, super super good. Um, so there you go. Um, is that everything? I think that's everything. It's also re- really as if I haven't sold you on salami yet, but also it's one of those things that you can just keep some in the fridge because it lasts forever. Right. And, you know, if you've got one of those trays of salami and mozzarella slices or mozzarella sticks or however that, that comes, or the – you Chunks. can they get them – they're available, like, increasingly now because I think right. manufacturers are getting it, that the, you can get the mozzarella sticks wrapped up in salami. They sell them, like, ready-made. Ready if you keep a stock of those in the fridge, if you have those moments where – I just need a snack. I don't want to cook something. Or even if you come home from work and it's late and, you know, all of that. Instant keto food. You don't have to think about macro. You don't have to think about anything. They're just – and they keep a long time. So it's not like you – like you you don't buy a lot because they're going to go off. They won't. You can keep your fridge stock with them. So that can be your magical emergency keto backup in your fridge. Instant meal, instant snack. It's that's really, really good for that. Right. So, um, and it doesn't go bad. Now, on the other hand, liverwurst, on the other hand, it will go bad. And I know this from personal experience. So if you buy liverwurst, make sure you eat it quickly. Because let me just say, you don't want that. You don't want that to be happening in, in the fridge. So, but salami, on the other hand, will last. All right, so that's your salami episode. So your your challenge for this week is to go out and find some and make a meal out of it. I like to take some and just dip it in guacamole and eat it that way because it's good. It's a good vehicle for, for guacamole. So there you go. And, it, and actually in my um, – in our – in the holiday cookbook, uh, I actually used – there's some dips in there and there was a lovely light kind of – Greek cucumbery dip that that um, tzatziki? The tzatziki mozzarella sauce? wrapped in in salami, right. you know, things dipped in that were fantastic dip transporters. Fantastic. Right. In case you didn't, in, in case you thought it was uncouth to just dip your finger in the dip or just you know yeah. pour it straight into your face hole, you should use some sort of other transport vehicle. Yes, and and the prosciutto mozzarella sticks are fantastic for that. All right, then. All right. Well, Carrie Brown, thank you very much again, as always. This was great. And I guess we'll talk next week, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Of course. It's a date. All right. We'll talk to you then. Bye. And that'll do it for another episode of the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. If you go to ketoevangelistkitchen.com sign up for the newsletter you will you'll get access to all of Carrie's awesome recipes in your inbox that's right because who wants to miss a recipe from the Carrie Brown not me I'll tell you that right now as we talked about in the show you can find us on social media we are the Keto Evangelist Kitchen Facebook group facebook.com slash group slash Keto Evangelist Kitchen and also on the Twitters and the Instagrams, Keto Van Kitchen on Twitter and Keto Evangelist Kitchen on Instagram. So go find some salami that you like. Don't settle for just the generic. Find something that's cool. Find something that's interesting and neato. Or, you know, don't. Whatever. I don't care. You do your own thing. That leaves more for me. All right, then. Until next time, keep being awesome.
powered by ketones.